We're gonna bring up Canva in here for you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Canva. Not canvas. Canva. <clears throat> and then when you go ahead and log in on here, and then you can use my computer. Okay. And then we'll just hook up my the projector, and you'll be good to go. And I'll use yours monitor. Okay. Okay. Mm. I usually say, yay, technology. Is anybody in there? I don't know. That's okay. I'll find out in a second. But you're going to have to be the one who likes them there. Let me get on there. Okay. Get all set up and okay. Get all set up. And then. Okay, we're good. Let's put yours. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah. how do we make this bigger? Screen. Um, so let's go ahead and make that bigger. And then let's let anyone in first. So go to participants and admit them all in first. And then you would go to share screen and share sound in case you got sound bites and click on your presentation and hit share. And it should share for us and for them. Yay. You'll be good to go. All right. I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide. Can, you can like shrink it up. Try pushing. <laughs> that button. There you go. All right. Good morning. It's weird not sitting down doing a presentation. So this is my first time doing hybrid. I missed that in my school life because I was on medical leave. So I have never had um, in person and online all at once. So please have a little bit of grace. I'm gonna to talk to you today about tower gardens. No. <laughs> so my name is Carol Travis. I've been teaching for 11 years. I teach floral at my program, Case AFNR, animal, um, I mean, plant science, ag business leadership, and I'm gonna start an ag enterprise program at my school. We have a floral shop at my school. Today, we're gonna to show students how to grow their own food. And we're gonna talk about a little bit about my school, how I got the idea, what a tower garden is, how to incorporate it to an SAE project. And I'm gonna give you all my tips and tricks and do's and don'ts, um, and then show you how to order things and some other things. So my high school is actually on a community college campus. We're the alternative school at my district. Um, there's, we, it's Pasco School District, and we have Chiawana and Pasco. Chiawana is the largest high school in Washington State. Um, and then the students who don't fit into a traditional high school who's lacking credits come to me and get to go through my program. We have 100% free and reduced lunch. We have a teen parenting program and we have a baby bus where the bus goes, gets the teen parents and the babies, brings them to our school. We have a lot of resources at our school, such as a food pantry, counseling. Um, we have internships to have them with resources for uh, shelter or health and medical, anything that they would need. We have about 200 students that are enrolled. It fluctuates. We're kind of like a revolving door. We graduate, we do three graduations a year. So we say goodbye and hello and just get those kids to get to their diplomas. 80% Hispanic. And uh, the interesting thing about our school is because our kids kind of have a hard life. We only have a 43% um, attendance rate. So only 43% of our students attend all the time. So they're missing a lot of class and we have to figure out 
innovative ways to get them to do the work and get credit. So part of the three circle model, and my friends are in the back, is uh, SAE projects. And I've always talked to them and they're like, you gotta do SAE, it's your job. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it with my clientele. And so I have really been talking to people and getting ideas and I've also learned how to write grants for SAE projects. So I came upon a lot of money and I got a $40,000 uh, technology implementation grant through CASE. And it was a little bit, I budgeted out things, but I didn't take into discounts. And so I had some money left over. So I called my friend Mel Phelps, he's a case lead teacher in New York. And I said, hey Mel, I got all this money, what do I do? And he's like, have I got an idea for you? This is what I do in my program. So he told me about the, bro the garden tower and he purchased them through grants and he has, it's like a sunroom greenhouse on his program. It's a glass, structure attached to his classroom and then it has a drain so it's not like a separate greenhouse but he has all his grow towers in there and he actually raises uh food for his cafeteria and his um his school it's a small school so he has k through eight and he um has his middle schoolers take it to the elementary school and teaches the elementary kids how to grow their own food, teaches the teachers, they'll go down once a week and touch the pH levels and everything. And so I was like, that's awesome. I want to do something like that in my school. Um, when he wrote his grants, he really wanted to focus on where does your food come from? And it's not from the grocery store. And that's a really big idea that he wanted people to do or know. So these are his students um, doing things. They really, really love it. I don't know if you can see it too well, but they plan them right in the classroom. It's super easy to set up. So I'm gonna talk to you about what you get with the tower garden and what, how it works. So you get rock wool cubes. It's kind of like floral foam if you're not familiar with it and you soak them and then you put seeds in it and about three weeks, you transplant those little rock cubes. Thank you. You trans, um, plant the cubes into there. So I've done it both ways. Sometimes I would germinate them first and put it in. Sometimes my kids are just like, nope, we're just going to plant them. And I've seen results both ways. So you fill the reservoir with water in a mineral solution, and then there's a central tube that goes up and it's a constant water source over the roots. Um, there's a low wattage pump that's a low humming sound. I don't notice it in my classroom. I have a floral cooler in my classroom too, so the sound's not too bad. Um, and there's a timer that you can set on it that it could go up every 15 minutes if you need it to be. Let me out of internet. Okay, so after you set it all up, all you have to do is check the water levels, make sure that it's full all the time, clean the pump filter. It's really interesting. Once it starts going, it's like a lot of corn husk and it gets super thick and it's all down. So you need to make sure you clean the pump out so it doesn't get clogged up. You have the students check a pH level and I use a lab quest um, to do that or we have strips that they could use. And then um, if their pH levels off, there's directions that's a pH up or down solution that there's directions. So they put on their PPE and uh, monitor those levels and fix it and retest. And that only happens about once a week. And then it becomes harvest ready. So the things that you could grow are, you know, no root vegetables, but you could grow strawberries. We did tomatoes, lettuce, um, 
kale is what some other people use what um whatever you want to use in your school cafeterias or if you want to deliver those food to the food bank i've done cucumbers but they got pretty big and you know there's a there's another cage i'll talk about that holds things up we have done flowers before um the flowers have never bloomed but we actually we had actual plants come out of them so when you're doing this, um, some tips is never leave it unattended while filling it up. I left my students fill it up and I'm like, what's that sound? And it was a waterfall <laughs> coming over. And you know, you just assume like they'll know what to do. And sometimes they don't. Signage is super important. I had one of these in my common era, um, my common areas. And I, because I want my whole entire school to see what we're doing. Well, there was a meeting in there and apparently the pump was a little loud for them. So they unplugged it and didn't let me know. So I came in the morning and everything was droopy because I didn't put a sign on it and said, please don't touch or, you know, also students forget what they plant. I don't know if you've experienced that before. So to label every little pod, you could put a name in that and that's super important. Um, Another thing that we've learned is to plant the smaller plants towards the top because you don't want to plant tomatoes at the top and lettuce at the bottom because the tomatoes will cover the lettuce. Um, lights make people sick if they're on for a long time and they'll give students headaches. I had a girl almost throw up. I forgot I'm recording, but because she was sitting in class and the lights are super, super bright. And she, after two days, she's like, oh, I can't handle this anymore. So what I did is the lights are on a timer and I just made that as soon as school got over, they were on all the way till when it came and I still had success. Um, and then they get light from just the overhead lights. Another can't stress enough is make signage. So another thing that happened is I had the Great Tomato Massacre 2020. Um, I, my, we had green tomatoes. They were almost turning red. And I had visitors come in and I'm like, have you seen my garden towers? And it was my student's SAE project. She had been working on it for three months and I came in and all my tomatoes were chopped off with little nubbings because my janitor wanted to help and clean it up for me. And she didn't know, I cried. My student was okay, but I cried because um, we were almost there. And uh, so it's because I didn't have a sign. I didn't say, this is a student's project, please don't touch. Um, you know, other kids might want to mess with it or not. So it's just signage is really, really important. And when I don't know about you, but I always get tours that come through my classroom. My, principal likes to we're always doing crazy things in my class and he likes people to come and see that but if you grow anything people are impressed you could grow grass and they're like whoa there's you're growing things in your classroom and it's super excited so it's really awesome to like promote your program and do hands-on activities um this is bend oregon they have their grow towers um outside on the patio and they don't have lights and they have already this is this year they've already harvested um they have that this is where i ordered mine from it's the guy in bend oregon they have about they said five garden towers my friend mel is up to 11. so they they produce a lot so when you order you get your tower you get your seeds um it's like a little greenhouse kit you get um the solutions you have to order accessories like the led lights you have to order separately and then the trolley to move um super important unless you're gonna make sure it's gonna stay because those are a little bit heavy this grows 20 plants um and it's about twelve hundred dollars There's also lesson plans that you can use. It comes with 10 and it's kind of a plant science curriculum, but it's lower level. So if your students wanted to teach, 
younger levels that would, or if you have a sub, there's lessons on actual hydroponics and what that is, seeds, germination, um, photosynthesis, and it comes with a PowerPoint too. And I uploaded all of that in the Google Drives if you wanted to take a look at that. This is how you order. His name is Jerry Rudolph. And so, and this is on the presentation too. So there's a QR code, towergarden.com. If you just go to towergarden.com, they're going to give you any salesperson. This guy's local, so he knows um, what we experience in Washington instead of some guy in Tennessee who doesn't understand our climate. So I have other ideas that I wanted to share with you. I went to the uh, Northwest Flower and Garden Show in Seattle, and there are these cool things um, called a veggie pod, and they're a self-watering garden system that you could put outside because I do not have a greenhouse, and since we're on the community college's campus, they're not going to let me dig up the grounds because um, if I leave them, they're stuck with a mess or, you know, it's just the rules. So I had to come up with ideas like I want my kids growing and I want them to experience what it's like to plant and to harvest. And this is really cool. And so the bottom is a reservoir of water and it, a hose actually hooks up to it. And then there's a cover that makes your growing season longer because I plant I haven't planted yet, but I have a plan to plant in the fall. Um, it comes on wheels, so you can move them around if you wanted to. Um, and then it mists as well. So it, there's big ones and small ones. The, there's ones that have two little bays. Um, and those are the ones that come on the trolleys. If you want bigger ones, they're kind of a permanent thing. And it's a pretty sweet deal. And the companies in California, they're so nice to work with. Um, one of my, and I have my students do it all. Like if they need an SAE project, I'm like, well, there's the box, here's the instructions. You know, you have to supervise them and help guide them a little bit, but um, it's interesting who will read the instructions and who will try to put it together and then go back to read the instructions <laughs> because they, they're not figuring it out. Um, but one of our dollies didn't come with caster wheels and I said, hey, I need caster wheels. And they said, okay, and they just sent them to me. It was like zero hassle. Um, the next thing that I don't have yet, but I'm in it, is I want to have, um, I had a little one. This one's called Aqua Sprouts. I had a little teeny weeny countertop. I don't know what you call them. It's like a fish and, oh, thank you, um, aquaponics. And the one that I had, I would get teeny weedy seedlings and they would just die. But I think it's because I used a beta fish and not actual fish. So that's a that's a cool project. My fish, oh, my fish got stuck in a the filter. So we had a funeral and they played the Titanic and they flushed it down the toilet. It was so sweet. It broke my heart. I think I shed a tear. His name was Little G. But they really like to have live things in their classroom that they, they, they love it, it, it makes them, because when I said I had a bad attendance problem, my administrator said, find a way to get the students here. And it works because my students love coming in. They have a responsibility now, like, oh, I have to go check on my plants. And they like take pictures, oh, look, it's growing or it's germinated or, you know, I have to make sure my fish is okay. And when um, we go on FFA, um, field trips, they'll text their friends to make sure that everything's going okay. So it's super fun. Yeah, there was a question yeah. came through in the chat. It probably was somebody who came in later. They asked what the name of the system is. Again. Oh, it's yeah. Tower Gardens. And I could go back to how to order. Um, Tower Garden Flex is the growing system. Well, there's a PDF, yeah, yep, that I put in there. So, how does it support the larger plants like tomato plants in those little uh, in those little slots? They get pretty big, you know. But there's also a cage that you could put over it. 
I've never used one. I, I mean, and it's been fine. It goes. Sorry, I mean, it comes out like this, and you know, they're pretty. The cage is, you know, about two feet around and there's different ones. The one in Bend, Oregon had a cage. Yeah, the roots, the roots go all the way down to the reservoir. I mean, it's, it's a big chunk of your roots. And after your season's done, it takes a little bit to clean them and to get them off. The rock wool is in the nesting pots, and they sit right in there. And then there's a, you can come and look, there's a tube um, like that. So that's how the water comes, and then to the top, and it just filters, 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 filters. Can I say on water? Is there nutrients in the water? Or just um, you they come with the nutrients. Um, it's called the nutrient blend. I'm not really sure what it is, but you can, and if you just have like a scoop of that, and then fill up one scoop, and then you fill it up. And um, there's a clear plastic tube that you hook up to your sink, and you just fill it up. So you can scoop in, fill it up. You'll have to roll it over to see and make sure they have to fill it up probably every two weeks is when they lose some of the water. Yeah. Every week, check the pH. And it, the pH levels haven't changed that significantly for me because you're always adding the nutrients and stuff. It's a pretty good idea. Um, I'm trying to think that, you know, Tracy Brown, bought one because she's like, I just want something to grow in my classroom. So Mike is the one who's like, you have to do a workshop on this because I hosted a floral contest and I had um, one in my room and one in the common room. He's like, tell me about this and why do you do this? And I just needed a way that students could have an SAE project that's school based because they're not really, some of them can't do it at home. And plus they wanted a way to grow things and food. Um, we're not allowed to grow food for consumption, but since it's their project, I just say you can do whatever you want. So we've had this salad before, um, you know, we almost had tomatoes <laughs> and then COVID happened. That was so heartbreaking, but that's why signage is so important, but it was super exciting and they would come in and see and it was, it was awesome. So I have three of these now. I have two grow tables and then I have three of these and I have three budget pots. So even though I don't have a greenhouse, they could plant and transplant. Oh, year. You go, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have a half hour. Do you guys have any questions or do you have any um, similar things that you do in your classroom? Have you made your own hydroponic systems? Who said yes? Oh, what do you do? I, so I have a system that's three stories tall with uh, PVC pipe, and then uh, the water just drains out the bottom um, into a five gallon bucket for a septic drain pump. So the pump is pumped at the top, and it worked its way through all the plants. And I was going to say with the nutrients, it's kind of fun to um, screw around with those a little bit and show the kids the differences in it being okay and what happens when there's something lacking. Yeah, it's very, when you said plants react to it very quickly, it's very, very true. Like if you have spring break, you need to prepare for that and make sure, okay, guys, is your water full enough? Are you, you know, are you going to go in during spring break and check them? Um, on my one, I've left it for spring break and it was okay. It was a little bit like you wanted to come in. Um, they were smaller though, but if it was larger and they're producing a lot, I would actually go in. You might need to check it more than once a week. But if, um, if it runs out, man, or if they unplug it the next day, they're all droopy and you know, to the point where they might not even come back. 
There was a question that came in on the chat, Carol. Um, they asked, do you have a list of grants that you applied for to obtain these? Um, I sure do. <laughs> so um, I did the WOPO grant. I did this year, I did the OSPI SAE for all grants. I got $5,000 from that. Case grants I've applied, I got two or three of those. Um, just whenever um, the grant slide, I said, if you write them, they will come. And they really want technology into your classroom and they want your students to be doing things and ag literacy is super important. And especially if they don't get experience this anywhere else. And so um, Mel did the, uh, the Living to Serve grant as well. I did the Portiva grant. Um, those are off the top of my head. I always, whenever a grant comes through um, the listserv, I always apply and, you know, try my hardest. They, um, they really want application and they want to know your demographics when you want the grants and how many students is this going to affect? Well, potentially this is going to affect, well, it has affected not only my students, but the community. And uh, well, and it's important because there's really, um, food insecurity is a big deal. And if they learn how to grow their own food, that's a big deal. So, yeah. This is a tower garden. Yes. There's also garden towers, which are soil-based. Yep. Which I, I bought. I need to cut that and watch them, but I have not assembled them. Anyway, my vision was that things would be good at the Has anybody tried the soil based towers? Like your Toby's gone to Toby's and Toby's Blue. I like the idea of it. If you change them, you get the quicker results. Yeah. Anybody? Has anybody tried the soil based towers? I, I have a tour of the tower, but on my growing stands, um, you know, soil is a forever thing. And so you're going to have to transplant and you need to add, you know, nutrients and add different things to the soil and mix it in. Where these, you know, you got unplugged and yeah, it's clean, clear, disinfectant, and you're ready to go. But if you have a soil pot, that's to me, I don't like messes, and that sounds a little bit messy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. My community college uh, in their greenhouse, they just did, they built their own hydroponic system out of PVC pipe, and the students are doing test trials there as well. So, it, like I said, it, this cost um, about $1,200, so it's a little bit expensive to start up, but then it's, you know, I get my seeds from the master gardener, so you don't need all the extra ones to me. So my students could take it home and plant, or they could choose what they want to plant on there. Um, I, my only rule is no root vegetables, and I explain why, like, where is the carrot going to grow? Like, this is, <laughs> you know, this is where, maybe in the, in the other ones, um, they could do that, but that's, I'll let them try whatever that they want to do because it's their project, and they need to learn. But one of them is specifically for food. And then I let them also partner up on it as well. And you can have, um, you know, they can partner up on the pH levels and the water levels, but they're in charge of their own thing. And these little pods that you can put them in, you can buy more and then add to it as well. So if you have vaulted ceilings, um, I know space is a commodity for a lot of people. And I don't think that these take up a lot of spaces, especially if you think outside of your classroom and there's like a corner in the hallway, um, People always tease me like people are going to try to grow inappropriate things. That has never happened ever. Yeah, so, how many do you have total? Characters? I have three. Yep, I have three of these. And they all fit in my classroom. And I did try to put them out, but after, because when you're traveling for field trips and everything, it just made me sad when. 
when a whole grain went and because it was too loud to be in part of it. And it was the adults that did it, not my students, so. Um, I'm really excited about these veggie pods too. So it's a, it's gonna be awesome. It's a self-watering system too. In the Tri-Cities, you guys think it's hot here, but we have this weather for a lot of the time, but not the humidity. And so when we ever we grow things outside, we need to make sure that it's watering because if you miss one day, everything's whoop. So a self-watering system is really good. Yes, so we do. Yeah, the people that sell these actually um, was at our local home and garden show and they've done it. Um, and but they um, they don't have a full grown. I mean, that might be difficult if it was full with tomatoes, but if you have little sprouts, I think it would be okay. So um, Mike was like, oh, I'll bring mine. And I thought he his was growing. So I was kind of relieved. I was like, how are we gonna get that in the hotel and keep it plugged in and ready to go? So he just wanted to have an example for you. Oh, uh, yeah, I got nervous, so I talked super fast. <laughs> So I do SAE projects. So my students can choose to do a foundational SAE, which is an SAE for all, basically a career research project or a foundational SAE that's exploratory. Um, so they would, I give them options. I have a worm bin in my classroom so they can you know, raise worms and feed them every day. I have three of these. So that would be six SAE projects or if they wanted to break them up or my grow towers or veggie pods. And so they will do their plan in SAE, I mean AET, and just plan it out. This is my project. These are what I, these are the goals that I want to do. Um, I always make them think about the outcome. So what are you going to do after you grow these? Or are you going to be, are you going to donate it to the Food bank, are you gonna donate it to the food pantry? Is it just a learning thing? Is it, are you gonna do experiments or tests? And um, they do a presentation afterwards. So they learn skills and do a presentation. And it's nice because then I have pictures of them that they took in that I can show my community. And that, you know, it's all because of the creeks. They, they, <laughs> they've helped me out. And I was like, how do you do SAEs? And, they actually do it as a fair where all of the community members come and look at all of their SAE projects. And it's just, you have to be innovative when students aren't doing traditional SAE projects. You wanna give them opportunities. And for me, I'm like such a hands-on girl. I would much rather do something hands-on than, you know, my students are just trying to focus on graduation and I know it's important to think about those next steps, but to them, it's like, oh, it's just more past work and having those conversations and having them experience field trips and guest speakers and having them do an actual hands on SAE project is more beneficial for my students and my demographic than, hey, go on the explore and keep these interest surveys and because they're just doing the steps and not really thinking about it. Um, so in New York, Mel, his students, um, because it's a K through 12, his students will put one in the elementary school and then every week go to the elementary school and help the elementary school students test it out and work with the teacher on it, make sure that it's okay, and kind of do lessons with them. So that's super, super cool too. And they learn a lot um, about, it's interesting that we take for granted, I think, because we've been in ag for so long and around plants for so long, but when they see like, oh, 
I didn't know tomatoes had flowers and they talk about pollination and I have them pollinate the little flowers and then they didn't know that tomatoes were green before they were red because they only go to the store and buy red tomatoes. And so it's a really good learning opportunity for them. <clears throat> and they like to tell their friends. I had like, they'll bring their friends to my class and look at what they're doing. <coughs> so it's super nice. And they're flexible and, um, you know, like the lights, you can move them if you want them on. I felt so bad that I made people sick. I didn't know that that was the thing. <laughs> the lights, I didn't, I didn't hook up the lights, but they're, they're bright, super bright. Yeah, so I, um, they're off and then as soon as school out, they come on. And then they're on until I think seven, 45 when students come in. The timer is actually on. Yep. There's a timer on the lights and there's a timer on the pump. So you get, I leave my pump going all of the time, um, but you could set it up for every 15 minutes. And it's kind of nice. It sounds like there's like a waterfall in the classroom, you know, give it a little zen. Um, and then the aquaponics, this one, this one comes with a, a bar that you can hang a grow light on it as well. So, and this one's, oh, it was like $180. And it's small because I like small things in my classroom because I don't have a whole lot of, I have a lot of space compared to what I used to have, but I don't have a whole lot of space. Question coming in over here: Are the pumps easy to replace? Yeah, Amazon. <clears throat> yep. I don't remember. Or you know, if you order um, from the company, we could go to the website and they have like videos. Um, let me. No, no. Oh, this is your computer. Yeah, it's okay. Your yeah, engine is just no. Um. Oh, Tower Gardens. Ah. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's okay. It's it's, it's not on your it's my oh I can't go to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy. You want to know what you're growing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's There we go. So um, let's go to the shop. There's home ones, you could buy them for your home or you could, I do the flex growing because it comes on wheels. There's school gardens, there's a blog. There's a lot of resources that come with it. When they grow lettuce, do you have them grow different varieties so they can mm -hmm. make Make, like notice the differences between them. Yeah, butternut's a really good one, or leaf lettuce is another good one. I've had them grow basil before. I haven't done kale. New York has done kale. There's community gardens that people do. And so some people, like, if you don't have room inside of your classroom, you could put it outside. There's all these. Lovely pictures. There's a question that came in to Carol. How long have you used aqua sprouts in your classroom? Um, they want to try and add aquaponics systems to that wall. So you're asking how long you've been using. So I are you talking about the aquaponic fish? Um, yeah, or just, just in general. general. 
of how long you've used that in your classroom? Because you mentioned that you have the powers in your classroom, and I thought you said that you had the aquaponics, but I just was curious in how long you did it and how successful it is. Because when I was in high school, my ag teacher tried to do it at least my junior or senior year, but they seem sometimes kind of finicky with the fish. So I was wondering how successful you were using those. Um, I. It was an SAE project and we were not very successful and we learned. So we had one fish that died and then the sprouts died and then we have a fish that lived and the sprouts died. So I haven't been super successful. Um, it comes with, on the top, it comes with like this gravel. I don't know what it is. It's like a white gravel and it holds moisture, but it's not like perlite. But I saw at a garden show that they use the nesting pots with vermiculite or perlite in there. And that was a little bit better to use. And that has a pump that goes as well. Um, I think that if, you know, what had been successful is we put pothos cuttings in them. And those, I mean, you can't kill pothos. So <laughs> those worked well. And so that was it. So that was probably three years ago that we've done that one. And so I, that one was a small, like, like a small aquarium size. The aquaponics is a little bit bigger. So I think I can have actual goldfish. Beta fish are um, mouth breeders, so they don't produce enough oxygen. Um, and you can't have more than one beta in a fish tank as well. So I think if I use goldfish, it would be better. I hear that goldfish, um, get a little bit messy. So you have to be careful about the tank. You don't want to breathe some gum, so. Another question they had is, do you need you. different growing solutions for different plants or is it the same one for all? It's the same for all. Yep. And it's liquid and it comes with a scoop. So you just, you know, your kids like four tablespoons and put it in. And then if the pH is wrong and it's two gallons, there's a pH up solution and a pH down solution. So you would measure your pH and then it's two tablespoons per gallon to raise or lower it. But you would have to let it run a little bit before you put it in and then it runs and then you either raise or lower it. And then PPE is important. I have them wear an apron, gloves, goggles, because it's chemicals and safety. Um, and the question came in too, can you substitute out other liquid fertilizer solutions? Ooh, that's a good, um, that's a, you know, that we, there's, <laughs> There's grow places locally all the time. There's a lot of indoor growing that doesn't necessarily have to do with inappropriate plants. Um, I have a, a place that's called uh, Grow Anything in the Tri City. So I've always used the stuff that was made for hydroponics because it's made for hydroponics and the plants react so quickly. So if you're off a little bit, your plants are gonna tell you. It's a very, I mean, in a day, they'll tell you if something's not going right. That could be a good experiment too, with the side Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have found that they're interested in the Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they want to give you free things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the reality is that's a, a, a huge, a huge business and it's a growing business. And if a kid is like, hey, I want to do that for a living and they come and take my class and I'm, I'm all about it. It's better than doing things that are not sanctioned. I would rather them go to college and learn plant science and learn all about hydroponics. And it's a sustainable thing where 
when we talk about feeding the world without any more land, we have to find innovative ways to do that. So, well, thank you guys so much. And thank, thank you guys for showing up. And um, hopefully you'll have time to get to your next session now. Mm -hmm. And we got plenty yeah. of time. Yep. Yeah, we'll be back yep. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you could. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, it's funny. Um, okay, now I'm like, I'm going to do it. All right. <laughs>